everyone, George from ZenHub here with a closer look at some of the similarities and key differences between GitHub projects and ZenHub. In addition to being the best place to manage everything to do with building software, GitHub gives you a place to keep track of the things that you're going to get done. Now, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's a list view. Uh, you can filter it. There are labels that allow you to organize work. You can assign issues to people so that you know who's working on something. There are milestones that allow you to group work together that you're going to do within a period of time. Um, most people tend to use milestones to represent their sprints. And there are two states, open and closed. Now, this is pretty good for an individual or for a small team. But once you get going, you start asking questions like, is this issue in progress? Is it blocked? There's really no understanding of where this issue is in the flow from thought to production. Once you really get going, you're going to find you need something a little bit more. So let's go look at GitHub projects. All right, now the first thing you'll notice, these are the same issues that we just saw in the GitHub issue tracker. But instead of just a straight list view, here we have some columns. Depending on how you and your team work, you might set up columns for a product backlog, a sprint backlog, in progress, review, and a done column. You and your team can set up these columns the way that you want. The way that you can prioritize work in a Kanban style board um, is by moving cards up or down. If you decide that something is no longer a high priority, then you drag it down. And so let's say that something is uh, something at the bottom here now becomes the most important thing you need to work at. You need to drag it all the way up. Let it go until you're at the top. There we go. Uh, and you can filter the cards using the same search syntax. And that's pretty much it. So it's a pretty good way for an individual to add some workflow to your GitHub issues. Once you need to do a bunch of work and plan a sprint or figure out which things you're going to need to do, which things you're not going to do, anytime you need to refine your work, plan your work, um, you will come up against some of the constraints that a basic project board like GitHub Projects has. Okay, let's look at ZenHub. At first glance, uh, this may look a lot like the project board we just looked at in GitHub. There are similarities. Um, you can set up these columns to be whatever you want. Uh, this one has a few more columns than what we just looked at in the GitHub project board. Um, you can drag and drop issues to move them around. Uh, if I want to make this in progress, just drag and drop. And, um, oh, here's something new. Uh, you see this? This is a high priority issue. So if something is of the highest priority and you don't want anything to be able to be moved above it, uh, you can click on the triple dot menu and pin as a high priority. Uh, let's see more of the board. So let's use our browser to zoom out and see more. Uh, let's expand some of these columns so we can see even more. Isn't that great? Uh, let's collapse it. Uh, if we don't want to look at that icebox column, we can collapse that pipeline so that we don't have to see all those issues. And you might also notice that there are a lot more issues here than we were just looking at. And what ZenHub allows you to do is combine multiple GitHub repositories together into a workspace. So. This is not just a board. This is a workspace that allows you to group multiple repositories together that has a specific workflow that you and your team can set up. And it allows you to see the whole picture where again, a project only lets you see a repo at a time. And if your team works the way a lot of teams work, you probably have a bunch of GitHub repositories. So that's a key difference between ZenHub and GitHub. Let's say you need to do some bulk moving of issues. 
right? So let's say you and your team have decided that all of these, you're gonna ice box these. You're not gonna use them anymore. Well, you can click to select, and you'll notice that I've selected multiple cards. And now I can click the move to pipeline button, drop these in the ice box, and click done. That's great, right? Uh, I can also select issues and apply labels. Let's say these uh, need uh, need refinement. And you'll notice the labels get applied. I can also assign issues to people. I can assign them to a milestone so that when I'm doing sprint planning, I can select five, 10 issues at a time, add them to a milestone, do my sprint planning really quickly. So Zen Hub takes the things that you're gonna do on a day-by-day -day basis and makes them really quick and easy. And we've also taken great care to figure out the kinds of things that you do on a regular basis and try and help you out as best we can. So you remember when we were over in the GitHub project and we needed to move something from the bottom of the development backlog to the top? Well, let's scroll down here. Um, and uh, all I have to do is click on the triple dot menu and click send to top. Done. Look at that, there it is. Now, I can also pin it as a high priority issue. Again, triple dot, pin is high priority. You might have noticed that there are some special issues on the board as well. We call them epic issues. These are issues that are gonna take you more than a sprint or two. So these are gonna be your long-term goals or your short-term goals are gonna take a few sprints. You have a list view, we group them together. If you have an epic of epics, you can expand them. Um, and you'll notice here that we also have estimates. Estimates allow you and your team to decide whether or not one issue is more or less effort than another issue. The really important thing about that is that because all issues are not created equally, a progress bar showing you the number of issues complete doesn't always tell you the whole story. In this case, you can see we've got two progress bars here. One for the number of issues completed and another one for the number of points completed, the estimates. Now, what this tells me is that in this epic, we're further along than you might think so if you're just looking at the raw number of issues because some of these issues that remain are relatively low effort compared to the work that's already been completed. So this gives you a better understanding about when the work may actually get done. So in addition to the board, we give you all the reports you'd expect to see. Burn down, velocity so that you can make more accurate plans and not overcommit like this team has. Release reports so you can see scope change. And then lean reports like cumulative flow or control point charts so that you can figure out where your lead or cycle time is. And then, my favorite thing, you remember those epics that we just looked at? Well, ZenHub adds roadmaps. So the ZenHub roadmap allows you to see at a glance the progress of all of those epics that you have on your board. The green line acts like a pace line. So if the progress bar, which comes right from those issues closing, is to the left of the green line, then you are behind. If it's to the right, then you are ahead. If you really want to call this out, you can flip on the automated risk assessment, which color codes those epics, red, yellow, or green, depending on how far away from the dateline you are. And that helps you see right at a glance that these couple of projects here really need some help. You can also turn on a predicted end date that will tell you when this project may get done. And this is based on the amount of remaining work and the rate and pace that your team has been closing things on. So the great thing about all of this is that you'll find that the productivity enhancement that ZenHub brings makes it a great choice for pretty much any team size. So try it today. Go to ZenHub.com and check it out. See you next time.